Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this three-part series, we are going to look at how you can form some of the more sophisticated chords out there. The sevenths, the ninths, the elevenths, the eleven sharps, the thirteens, the altered chords, even some modal chords. And we are going to do all of this in one common way. We are just going to use what I guess we already know, major and minor chords or triads as we call them. We might sneak in a diminished chord or two, maybe an augmented for some additional fun, but for the most part it's just going to be major and minor chords and we are going to play them as slash chords. So what's going to happen is you'll have a bass, let's say D, and you'll have a completely different chord alongside this in the right hand in the upper register which A makes the bigger chord or the seventh chord or the extension chord a lot more, well, different sounding than what you would normally play in the traditional way. And it also allows you to change a lot quicker from one chord to the other. And the way I have found this useful in my journey is to actually remember it in the first place because we, we, we tend to play major and minor chords a lot in songs and whenever the seventh chord hits you or you know the seven sharp nine hits you it's very difficult to play but a, a good strategy would be to simplify the study or to continue with the knowledge we already know which is basically triad so in part one we are going to look at seventh chords in part two we are going to look at the modal chord so how do you build a chord which just feels like some kind of a mode maybe a Lydian or a, a Phrygian and so on and so forth or maybe a Mixolydian. That chord kind of inspires or gives out the vibe of that particular mode. So we'll do that in part two and in part three we are going to tackle some of the jazz tensions or the extensions, nines, elevens the alterations or the altered chords over the dominant feel, over the dominant seventh rather. So uh, do stay tuned for all these three parts. A great way to do so would be to check out the playlist where all these videos will be part of. And as the new videos reach you, you'll get a notification. But for that to happen, you need to hit that bell icon for regular notifications. So do consider hitting the subscribe button and then turning on that bell right away will be great. And all of the notes for this lesson, including everything I do on YouTube, are waiting for you on our Patreon page for just $5 a month as a subscription. So do consider that as well. Let's get cracking. First of all, major 7th. So I'm going to take the key of D for our 7th chords. So if you take the key of D, D major 7th, first of all, the formula for a major 7th chord will be 1, 3, 5, 7, Sagapani. Okay, now it's okay to play it like this. It's okay to also play it as an inversion. It, but... A good way to form this with some triad, but a good way to form this with a triadic approach is to just tell yourself, play F sharp minor upstairs and a single D downstairs. There we go. So a, a formula, if you want to help yourself remember it better, would be take any root, any of the 12 roots. Now ask yourself, go up a major third. So what's a major third from D? D, F sharp, correct. Major third is also two tones or four semitones. Okay, so go up to the F sharp and from the F sharp, you're going to play the minor. So F sharp minor. So it's not an F sharp minor chord. You can write it down as F sharp minor slash D. So whenever we write a slash chord like F sharp minor slash D, we want to play F sharp minor as the upper chord or in the right hand or in and around middle C and D would be the base of the chord. Okay, so F sharp minus slash D. Now you could even have some simple slash chords like D over A where this A actually contains a part of the D chord, isn't it? D major has A and there's an A. You could also have another simple slash chord like D slash F sharp. 
But even though it's a simple slash chord, why I say simple is to distinguish it from what we are doing now. Simple in the sense they contain a note of the triad, but yet it the overall triad doesn't sound stable. You know, if you take a D minor over F, D minor over A, it doesn't sound stable anymore. So there's a huge difference between a slash chord and an inversion, a chord inversion. Uh, uh, I'll not talk about that much here, but we'll leave you a few links in the description for you to understand exactly how inversions and slash chords work. Okay, so this would basically be up major third, play a minor chord. So up major third, play a minor chord and just play the root down. So you can now play that F sharp minor in any which way you want. It would still form a D major seven because all we always name the chords based on the root. So D is my root, D major 7th. So I can invert that, it'll still be D major 7th, no matter what. Okay, let's form a few other major 7 chords just so that we understand the concept. So C major 7th, what's the formula? Go up a major 3rd, play a minor chord. What's a major 3rd from C? C, D, E, E minor. And overall we have a nice old C major 7th. Let's do E flat major 7th. E flat up 3, E flat to G, G minor, also sounds a lot more cleaner if you want to play this in the upper register and still retain the root in the lower register. So there are a lot of use cases for playing chords this way. You can also look at a strategy of playing a st stride piano approach where you play the root note in the left hand and you play the triads up top. There we go your entire right hand is now free. So I can do things like now I wanted to go to A flat so maybe an A flat major 7th as well which will be A flat with a C minor upstairs. So rather than playing E flat coming all the way up and again playing E flat, you can make it a lot more economic. Okay, let's move forward then. I'm getting a bit carried away, but there are a few more seventh chords to discuss. Next one on the list would be the minor seventh. Now I guess you're getting the picture. So D, we are just going to go up an interval and play either a major or a minor triad. So D minor 7th would be D go up a minor 3rd. So minor 7th has a minor 3rd anyway in it. A major 7th has a major 3rd in it. So you went up a major 3rd. So minor 7th go up a minor 3rd and play the major chord. So go up minor play major. For uh, major 7th what was it? Go up major 3rd and play minor chord. So D major 7th go up major play minor. D minor 7th go up minor and play major. So a D minor 7th chord could be simplified with a slash chord system to be F major upstairs with a D in the bottom. Very nice when you're playing some funky stuff because you can open out your voicings. Just keep the root in the bottom, you know. Maybe with a little bit of a ghosted fifth. the voicing also a lot more clean especially if you're playing on electric pianos organs and so on and so forth so this would be your D minor 7th let's form a couple more maybe F minor 7th what's the logic whack F go up a minor 3rd play the major C minor 7th C go up a minor 3rd and play a major that's E flat major over C Let's do G minor 7th. Go up a minor 3rd and play a major. That's your minor 7th. Okay, so now coming to the dominant 7th chord. So again, I'll uh, take the key of D. So D, the logic for a dominant 7th chord is pretty easy. Go up a major 3rd like you did for the major 7th. But a dominant 7th will have a 1, 3, 5 and a flat 7. So I guess you're already seeing this. If I take my left hand away... 
This is F sharp diminished. If I keep my left hand, it's D7. So what is D7? It's F sharp diminished slash D. So what does that tell us about the chord? Go up a major third and play a diminished chord. Very useful while playing blues in, you know, the stride options. Or any of the groovy genres, you know. G. Now G will be G with a B diminished upstairs. You can invert it however you want. A. A7 you can form A7 as a A in the bottom with a C sharp diminished so C sharp slash A back to the D so it's another very clean way to play or you can just do it for accompaniment purposes you know Practice maybe this over the circle of fifths. D, G seventh, C seventh, F seventh, and then B, B flat seventh, and then it goes to E flat and so on. E flat would be a E flat with a G diminished. So you could practice this in a variety of ways. So let's move forward to my favorite chord, I think, of all time. I've, I've actually said that a lot of times, so I'm not kidding. That would be the minor major 7th. So D minor major 7th would be D minor major 7th. So the logic here is go up a minor 3rd. Remember, if, it, if the chord is called minor, you always want to go up a minor 3rd. If the chord is called major or dominant, you go up a major 3rd and then what do we play in a minor major 7th context? Go up a minor 3rd and we play a augmented chord. Okay. A nice chord to use over the melodic minor. It's like an F augmented and you can also look at it as D like an F augmented over D you can also look at it as A augmented over D you know you can also look at it as C sharp augmented over D because augmented chords are inverses of each other but I just like to stick to the logic of going up a minor third and augment it you get a nice minor major seventh in there and I have one more seventh chord for you that would be the minor seventh flat five. So just by the very name of it, it's a chord with a minor seventh and a flat five. That means a flat five will replace the perfect, which is that, that makes it a minor seventh. That would be a minor seventh flat five. So I guess you can now guess what's going on here. It's a root, any old root, go up a minor third and play a minor chord. Let's do C minor 7th flat 5, C upper minor 3rd minor, then B upper minor 3rd minor. So that will allow you to kind of even play it higher, maybe A upper minor 3rd minor, that's C minor over A, C minor slash A, okay? And you may be thinking, why, why did I not talk about the diminished seventh? The diminished seventh chord works in a slightly different way. We leave a couple of links in the description to understand the difference of diminished seventh versus minor seventh flat five, as well as how to form it and how to use the diminished seventh chord. But in a nutshell, you can remember any old diminished seventh chord by just going minor third, minor third and minor third so I would adopt a different strategy don't want triads for diminished seventh even though you could argue it's two diminished chords one after the other 
uh, you know separated a minor third apart that's another way to do it okay guys so we have a lot more work to do in part 2 we are going to look at modal chords chords which bring out the flavor of a mode in part 3 we are going to look at extensions altered chords and all the jazz tensions out there like the 9s 11s and 13s so do stay tuned hit that subscribe button turn on the bell for regular notifications get a copy of the patreon notes and i will catch you in the next one cheers